my God, this is a disaster. That place is filled with people, women, children, familiars. There's only one man who can fix this. Yeah, this is the goddamn chief. Get me Kowalski. Kowalski, thank God you're here. I'm Mr. Biff and I welcome you to Digitizer, the only retro gaming show that's proud to be riddled with weeping sores. Mock, mock! Mock! <laughs> Larry. Hello. What's your worst ever game that you ever bought? Uh, it's going to be a really obscure one. It was a Japanese game called uh, Assault Suit Lanos. <laughs> Basically, half of it was I didn't know what the hell was going on in it, but it was a tiny little Japanese robot in space, and it was unbelievably hard. And <laughs> Why did you buy it? Because there was a, Jap a robot on the front, and robots are still there <laughs> enough. <laughs> yeah. Would you have bought literally anything if it had a robot on the front? Yes. Which, which is your favourite Your favorite giant Japanese robot? I think Cybernator. That was a really good giant robot. That was just ironically the sequel to the game I really hated. So. <laughs> my my favourite Japanese robot is Canard. 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 Yeah, I've made that up. Octavius Kitten. Buyer's remorse ever. You right? Yeah? Sorry, I was just dealing with my shirt. Yes, yeah, sorry, would you like to ask that question again, Mr. Biffle? Have you ever suffered buyer's remorse with a video game? Oh God, so many times. Most recently would definitely be with Star Fox Zero. Um, now I'm not a big fan of Nintendo anywhere, I'm afraid. <gasps> but I thought you were going to push me over there. No, no, no. <laughs> push her to the floor. Nintendo, get, Nintendo get gets the floor. far too much praise. I agree. Um, so one of my most favourite games in the entire world would be Lilac Wars on the Nintendo 64. Mm. I think it was also called Star Fox in America. That uh, was an absolutely incredible game. I played it to death. And Star Fox Zero, I thought, was going to be the amazing, sparkly remake that we've been looking for all the time. And I never mind the fact it was on the Wii U, one of the most irritating consoles ever made. But it basically started off where the first couple of levels are very much like the first planets in the Lilac Wars game. So you're like, oh my God, this is amazing. It's all graphically insensual. And then you have to play some stupid levels where you're like picking up bombs and putting them down somewhere and you're a drone. And you're like, oh, I can't be doing with this. Uh, have you played Star Fox 2? I haven't played it, no. Um, I probably never will because I don't want a mini NES because they're balls. So. Oh, you're one of them purists. Anyway, yes. you're not missing much with Star Fox. You don't have to fill your house with filth. Yes. And I, <laughs> talking of filth, over to the left-hand side. Oh, oh, that's rich, isn't it? <laughs> Coming from, I don't know, Captain New Romantic. <laughs> yeah, all right. Oh, no, the phone's ringing. Oh, him. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Uh, well, I'll ask him. Mm -hmm. Paul? Yeah? Um, is it true that when you're at the beach in your Speedos, that, and you, you know, you're posing for the boys mm -hmm. and girls, that you sometimes put your colostomy bag around the front. <laughs> <laughs> not anymore. He says, not anymore. Can I ask you a question? Uh, when you last year entered that uh, uh, ugly face competition, you weren't allowed in because you said no professionals. That's yeah? not a question. That's not a question, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's a weird statement. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird statement. Jenny, <laughs> gameplay Jenny. Hello. Buyer's remorse. Ever suffered it with yeah, a game? Really recently, actually. <gasps> not a retro game, but this isn't going to be popular. House Flipper. House Flipper is a game where you buy houses, you do them up, you have to decorate them, you sell them on, and all the rest of it. Do you know, it's just work. Right there. Yeah, how are you doing? Mm, yeah, yeah, good. Buyers were more seven. I did actually. I remember because I'm a big Indiana Jones fan, and so I got in a boot sale at the time that collection of uh, video games based on movies. So you had Ghostbusters 2, Last, Last Crusade, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I really wanted to play Last Crusade game because it looked really good. And I put it in. And it was Samantha Fox's strip yeah. poker. And I was upset and disappointed because I didn't get Indiana Jones. And my dad went, I'll take it back to the shop for you. I don't think he did. Mm. I don't think he did at all. That's, uh, that's the intro. Uh, let's do another bit of the show. But first... Oh! It's time again for another Quiz Me Do, the part of the show where we test 
the host's judgment, uh, which is always a dangerous game to play. Uh, and today's game is called Gandhi or Pokemon. Have I said that right? Is it Pokemon? Because I always get told off by my children. I've always said Pokemon. 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 Pocket Monster. Did you say poo? <laughs> That's what it sounded like. Is it called Pokemon or Pokemon? Poo. <laughs> the aim of this game is to identify whether the quotes on the screen mm -hmm. are from Pokemon or Gandhi. So who said this, Gandhi or a Pokemon? Uh, or a character from the Pokemon universe. The first, the first quote is everybody makes a wrong turn once in a while. Everybody makes a wrong turn once in a while, don't they, Paul Gannon? Everybody takes a, makes a wrong turn once in a while. Sounds very that, philosophical. It does, but... A lot of Pokemon was quite philosophical. It's not as philosophical. It's not as philosophical as I'd like it to be for a Gandhi quote. No, I think you're right. We'll go with yeah. the cheaper version, mm -hmm. which is Pokemon. The answer is Ash Ketchum hey! is a Pokemon character. Yeah. Team right hand side of the desk, make your wonderful dream a reality. It will become your truth if anyone can. It's you. I don't know. It sounds like something from Team Rocket would say. Mm. But Does it? <laughs> no, I'm just saying that. No, it's definitely Gandhi. What do you reckon? Octavius, any input? Like, it sounds like the kind of thing that um, a gym leader would say after Ash has finally managed to defeat him. <laughs> and then they always go kind of sagely and like, oh, you know. So I'm going to have to press you on uh, what do you reckon? to an answer. Well, I reckon it's Gandhi. You probably think it's Pokemon. Let's, let's, well, you have the more offensive shirt, I think. Okay. <laughs> you just spit the difference and go for Gandamon. Um, all right, let's go with Gandhi. It was a, a quote by Natural Harmonia Gropius, a.k.a. N a Pokemon character. Good I don't know you. either. You Good just cool. made that up. You just made that up. That's not a Pokemon character. You look it up. I found it online. <laughs> oh, that's all right. It must be true. Was, was it on I a... mean, I found it in my head. Well, I... It wasn't on a fan fiction website, was it? No, it was on the... Are you sure that sounds like the name that someone would give themselves if they were well, inserting themselves yeah. into a Pokemon if we, story? If we had the time, we could Google this, <laughs> uh, but we don't. Okay. So we're going to move on. Hit Pokemon me. or Gandhi. Is it the weak can never forgive? Forg forgiveness is the attribute of the strong. Ooh. That's so Gandhi. It's a very Gandhi esque It's very Gandhi, it? yeah. Now, can I ask you something? Have these... I ever been bitten by a horse? The... Yeah, all right, well, that's <laughs> good. Um, the weak can never forgive. Forgiveness is the attribute of the strong. Yeah, that seems got Gandhi. got to be Gandhi. There's no forgiveness in Pokemon. It's all monsters fighting each other. It's all enslavement and you're, you're, and fighting. You're committing to Mahatma. Absolutely. Um, let's just yeah, go with this. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, the answer is... Yeah, Gandhi, <laughs> yeah. you're right. Well done. Yeah. Okay, it's easy to stand with the crowd. It takes courage to stand alone. I am so sure that's a Pokemon quote. That yeah, sounds very Pokemon. In fact, I'm pretty sure I have that in my book at home, which is called What Would Pikachu Do? So someone found out I have depression, so they sent me this book where it's just Pokemon quotes. Larry, <laughs> do you want to back this up? Yeah, I'm saying so. Okay, we're saying it's Gandhi. <gasps> what? <laughs> That's yeah. a, so I did Gandhi write famous Pokemon, Pokemon I think, Yeah, I think Gandhi did. <laughs> That's it. That's the end of Quiz We Do. Bye. <laughs> You're watching Digitizer the show. It's the most awesome thing ever. <laughs> Ticket, please. It's show and tell. My guest this episode is none other than... The Nostalgia Nerd. Hello. What have you brought for me to see? Well, well, today I have the Sega Lock-On Guns. Oh, I the, recognize them. These were Sega's answer to the laser sensation. I was big into these. I always wanted a, a laser tag as a child. Never got them because they mainly were available in America. With one of my first pay packets, I bought a, a photon. Do you remember those with the big red and green helmets? Mm -hmm. You're nodding, I don't know if no, you do. No, I have no idea, no. Um, <laughs> very good. Um, and then when I left my job at Teletext, this was my, my leaving present, I got a, a lock on. So I've always had a, a bit of a soft spot for them. Obviously Sega Toys has been around for a while and they started with, well they didn't start, but they produced things like this, the video driver. Blimey. Which, um... I don't think I've ever seen that. Before. Yeah, it's it's a terrible, terrible toy where you basically you get a plastic car, it moves across to the front of a screen, and you have to drive it past realistic cars. So, wait, real cars. Oh, wait a minute. The, so, oh, I see. There was like a little sort of bar that sat in front of the TV. That's right, yeah. And what, how did it move? Was it like um, a magnet or something? It, yeah, there's just like a little kind of rail, and the steering moves the car left and right, and then the kid needs to believe that this is part of this real video which is playing. So this, is a, this is a VHS running, 
And so, so even though the car is like about that size compared to the cars on the screen, yep, yep. Um, you know, but yep. I suppose it would have obscured the, the screen if it was any bigger. Yeah. I quite like that as a concept. Yeah, it good? It's, 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 it's terrible, but it's, I mean, as a concept, it's interesting. It's quite neat. So yeah. it's VHS, I see. Indeed. But uh, Sega uh, also did light guns and the like, and their first kind of foray was with the Zillion gun. I thought, I'll be honest, I thought this was the first Sega Toys toy. In the UK, these were often distributed under Matchbox Action. Right. And Tyco in other places like America. So it didn't have the Sega brand. In, in Japan, it was it was based on the um, Brazilian anime. So Let's have a look at the, the back. So, oh, that, that boy's firing off a mirror. Uh, he's doing a trick shot. Exactly. I mean, even loners can get a, a, immense amounts of fun from playing it. The concept of this was it was just a single gun and a target. So it's yeah. not much fun unless you get your mate to run around a field and shoot at him. So although, although these continued in Japan, they did OK. When Quasar started in Australia and came over to UK mm. and America, these were revived, if you like, for our markets right. because that was the 90s craze because it kind of brought all the action of aliens and the films in the 80s. Why I like about, in fact, the the, the car game and this it's it's kind of bringing gaming into real life yes. making it a tangible thing yeah that, were they successful yeah pretty successful i mean there was three versions of this this is the first version and then there was the mark ii mm. of the late 90s and then we moved on to it was a voice activated one as well where you could right. kind of shout at it and it would and you could shoot like, it. i don't get how that works like siri please shoot my friend a bit like that yeah so, should we test these out? Yeah, let's do it. Why don't, as they're a Sega product, why don't we get someone from Sega here to shoot at? I think that's a good plan. Is there anyone particularly you'd like to shoot at who is Sega related? Maybe like Sonic the Hedgehog? I mean, thinking back, I mean, the guy who really got my goat was Yuji Naka. He promised me 2D Sonic mm. into the late 90s, but he failed me. He let me down. Imagine if I was to go Ladies and gentlemen, Yuji Naka. I am, I'm going to. Look, it's Yuji Naka from Sega. Oh Thank my you. God. Oh, and he's, but you're going to have a shootout with him. Isn't that exciting? Look at him there. Oh, I've been waiting for this moment all my life. Look at him, he's giving you side eye. Oh, Naka, go down. This is exciting. I don't know if anyone else is feeling it. Oh my okay, God. Okay, hang on a minute, you Naki, you dirty, over. dirty cheat. <sighs> He's not even ready. Okay. This is what we expect from a man like you. <laughs> that sort of behavior. So, okay, well, I think you get a free shot, but ready, aim, fire. Go on, take him down. <laughs> oh, no, I think you're get that down. dirty knacker. What happened to Sonic on the Saturn, you beast? Where was it? Oh, Yuji Naka isn't even ducking. He's so cocksure of himself that he's not even bothered oh. to hide. Is he dead? Is Yuji Naka... No, he's oh, not gone into hiding. You ruined oh, Sonic! He's, he's you ruined it! He's the storming Naka! He's storming Naka! He's storming What are you no, playing at, Naka? Naka is dead. What are you doing? Yuji Naka is dead, ah. everyone. He has been murdered by Nostalgia Nerd. Oh, no, he's still going! He's Yuji Naka. <laughs> he's come back! He's... Uh, I don't understand when this game ends. Does anyone want to tell me what the end point of this is? You just have to sit here for a bit. Oh my god, he's coming around there. Look at him. The OG knacker. Oh, knacker. Oh, oh, that's a new noise. I think that means Yuji Naka has defeated Nostalgia Nerd. Unbelievable. <laughs> you didn't get your revenge. How'd you feel about that? Give it another 20 years. I'll get him. Bye, Yuji Naka. You go back to your hole that you live in. No, stop shooting. It's over, now. Naka. It's Just forget over. it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was Show and Tell. Thank you to the Nostalgia Nerd. Bye. <laughs> Listen up, Kowalski. Get your goddamn ass down to the city baths. <laughs> A big bee has gotten to the locker rooms and it's threatening to sting people on the fucking butthole. <laughs> Don't give me all that, Kowalski. For as long as I'm in charge, no bee will ever sting anyone on the fucking butthole. Now, are you gonna stop that goddamn bee or do I have to take your fucking badge? <laughs> God 
damn bees always stinging people on the fucking butthole! Did you know? Microsoft never advertised the original Xbox as being capable of playing DVDs, as doing so would have meant they would have to pay a $20 licensing fee every time they used the DVD logo. In fact, they had to hide the feature behind a separate remote control add-on for the console, which is why the remote was so expensive. $20 of it was just for the DVD license. Kitchen door. The granddad food tried a bit and nearly asked for more. Get your knees up. I love the sophisticated humor on the digitizer show. We are going to talk about two icons of the video game industry Mario, Mario. It is I, Mario. I believe that's his full name. Yeah. And Zelda. It is I, Zelda. Basically, the Legend of Zelda versus the Mario games. On Team. Electric Sandwich. It's a great prog rock band as well, <laughs> should you want to check them out. Um, so, <laughs> Team Electric uh, Sandwich, you will be talking about Mario Mario. Nice little keyboard there, very yeah, Rick Wakeman-esque of you. Uh, and with that get up... I've got the gold cape out in a minute. Oh! Uh, and on... The, the Vicious Triangles. They're a punk band, I believe, as well. The Vicious Triangles. Not for your mum. So, uh, where do we start today? Oh, I'm going to start with... Obviously, you're doing Zelda, and you're doing Mario. So, mm, let me see. I'm going to go with... Gilbert. Yes, I think we should start with Mario. So, Mario, tell me a little bit about him. Tell me about his history. Give me a bit of background for people who don't know who Mario is. He started out in Donkey Kong, mm -hmm. when he was known as Jumpman. Yes. Jumpman. Yes. yes jump. think, might be Jewish name, is it? Jumpman. <laughs> Mario Maybe. Jumpman. Famous is original name, Mario Jumpman. Yeah. We digress. Uh, and he became an icon uh, over the course of, uh, of several years. He, yes. Yeah, Mario, Super Mario Brothers. Yes. Regular uh, Mario regular Brothers. Regular Mario, Mario Brothers. <laughs> Super Mario Mario Brothers. Kart, Mario Tennis, so. Mario Golf. I Mario would... Gynecology. Yeah. That's a great one if you ever get your hands on that. Uh, what you do with the Wiimote in that one? Maybe? Don't want to know. Tell me a little bit something about Zelda for me. I don't know nothing. So Legend of Zelda is about um, some lad with a sword. Kind of adventure game is one of the most popular Nintendo franchises. And the uh, titular character Zelda is actually um, not the main character. Um, that always just confused me. Just did an amazingly deep and complex uh, game in terms of the storyline and in the gameplay, and in many ways very superior to the childish nature of Mario. Well, that is a very good point. I was going to say, Mario's just jumping and stuff, isn't it? It's, it's rubbish, quite, really. It's jumping on more nuanced. Stamping on mushrooms. It's something that people don't give it credit for. It's one of the most violent game series. He's a mass time. murderer. <laughs> What's cooler than being a mass murderer? Is Link better than a mass murderer? When he goes around, he stabs monsters in the eyes and oh, stuff. And I know, but that's still murdery, you know? Just because you're a baddie doesn't mean you don't have a value of life. An interesting but theological argument there, Mario's I think. like full mm. Vinnie Jones. He doesn't use any weapons. He uses his own body weight. <laughs> he uses, uses his, his, his arms. <laughs> Really <laughs> Who has the best weapon? Link with his sword or Mario with his bottom? <laughs> Wait, hang on. Mario has various <laughs> weapons that he, he, he sets things on fire. He has hammers. Link has a much better array of oh, weapons God, and he's gadgetry. Got, he's got an amazing arsenal of, of weapons. <laughs> Grow up or you can go sit in the back, <laughs> all right? On the naughty box. He has an amazing collection of uh, weapons and equipment. Mm. He's got well, he's got the standard sword, then he's got like a hook shot, he's got a massive hammer that is literally bigger than him. Much better than Mario's hammer. Not really, no, he, yeah. Mario can dress in costumes. He can dress up as a cat and run up a wall. So does Link. Link. Link does that in Majora's Mask. He actually takes on the persona and the physical appearance of other people. Yeah, right. Zelda's quite rich and in-depth, isn't mm. it? It's an adventure, but in a very simple format for me. It's mm. got all of this depth, but you know where you're going with it, certainly in the original games. I'd never seen anything like it before to be led through that story. Mm. And it looked very, very basic and yet isn't. So what about Mario then, eh? What's the defining trait of Mario okay. that makes it so great? It's everything Jenny just said, but stripped down to an even simpler form. You see, yeah, it's weird. Cause like Mario's like a good funky bass track. <laughs> it's simple, you get it going, you get a rhythm. Whereas Zelda's more of a kind of orchestral score. It's a sweeping, majestic uh, adventure. I'd, I'd say it's more freeform jazz. 
you know nothing about music. Mate, yours is just headbutting stuff. Yeah. Again, what's cooler than headbutting? It's, 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 it's just but, a princess running off. Yeah. All the time. Every single time, she just basically dinosaur lad rocks up, goes right, I'm taking her. They go off. Plumber's like, oh for God's sake. And that's that's it. He's a working class hero. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mario is a working class hero. That is a very good point. Do you think he's a contractor? Do you think he works for something? <laughs> well, I've never made a game where he puts his hand down the toilet plucking out poo. Because Mario does seem to be um, a, a man of all trades. He can be a racer. He can be a doctor. Well, he used to be a carpenter in Donkey Kong. Uh, what was he doing on a building site then? He was a carpenter. Yeah, but it, it was I too early. Was like, like, also, the his up. girlfriend had been taken up the top yeah. by a monkey. Pauline. Mm. So, who was the one in Mario Land? Peach. Peach. Was it? Oh, was it? I thought, I, thought, <laughs> yeah, what? I thought there had been three women in his life. No, four. Well, uh, yeah. How Peach, is this news Daisy. to you? I don't four. know. I don't, I don't know about his sex life all that much with Mario. Why are you assuming Italians. it's a sex life? They're friends. Come on, what else are you going to do in, in the Capsule Kingdom? So men and women can't be friends? No. <laughs> uh, okay, now we, we've descended into gender politics. Well, good. Uh, it's an interesting thing. It's Mario, boy, Link. Gender undefined, depending on who's playing it. But the default link, you can't make into a link. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there you go, no. it's it's sexist. Is it? I know I'm on dodgy ground, but we're <laughs> talking Mario here. Well, no. Let's, <laughs> let's get around to wrapping this up. Let's pluck at my heartstrings. Tell me an emotive reason. Sarah, please explain the Triforce. Uh, so the three sections of the Triforce rep represent uh, Ganon, uh, Link and Zelda. Zelda is wisdom, uh, Link is uh, courage, and then you have the evil of Ganon. It's not power. evil, it's power. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, specifically having Zelda uh, representing wisdom rather than something girly like love presents her as a very, very strong female role model for any young gamers. I approve this message. And uh, I pluck at my heartstrings, why should Mario win? Pl uh, plumbing is a very required <laughs> vocation. It is, you're right. <laughs> always has the plumbing yes, argument. That you're always never, wins. You're never going to be without a job. Well, ooh, a plumber. as always, I like to confer with my uh, confidant, Keith. Zelda. You just don't sound like Jenny right now. It's very strange. <laughs> yes, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to go with Zelda. Legend of Zelda is oh, my winner of the head-to-head -head today. Bias. Very excited about that. So there we go. Zelda wins. Mario gets binned. That's been head-to-head. -head. I'm going to bed. I think this is fixed. It is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs>Steve, welcome to what we are calling a show, Digitise the Show. <laughs> How are you enjoying yourself so far? How are the flaps? Lovely flaps, thank you. Right, so we're going to grill you over okay. a game. All right, that'll be fine. Ready? No. Let's, no, let's get that console rolling. I meant to say arcade. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, we've parted. The flaps. We are now at the arcade cabinet of delights, and I have Steve here. And we're going to play a game. What game have you been forced to choose? Uh, I have been forced to play Frogger. So let's get you started, right. and I will grill you then accordingly Five. with probing questions. Righto. Yep. Good. I'm in. Let's get back to eight. Go eight bit. Right? Yes. Because I remember seeing your show in Edinburgh a few times live. Did uh, you? Yes, I saw it a few Which times. Which one? In the tiny room or the bigger room? Uh, it was the tiny room. I'm that OG. was great, yeah. Nowadays, everyone is invested in gaming. It's one of the biggest industries in the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you started doing 8-bit, though, was it hard to get people in through the front doors? No, I mean, it was the opposite, because we did sketch... Me and Sam Pamphlon, the other team captain, we did sketch comedy for years and no one came to that. And then we plugged in a Nintendo Wii and got drunk at midnight and everybody came and it sold out. We'd given up, because we had we had three goes at um, doing a sketch show and yeah. we got to... We got longlisted for the Comedy Award in the third year, but didn't get sh uh, shortlisted. So, yeah, so we 
just went out for fun, but we'd given up being an act. We thought that was the last thing we were going to do, and we were just going to get drunk with our mates and play video games, and then that ended up being a TV show, so it was an entire punt, really. Well, how did Dara get involved, though? Because obviously it went to Dave. It did. And how was the process of developing something that's kind of a little bit anarchic, a little mm -hmm. bit loose around the edges for something in TV world, which has to be strict and defined, and, you know, it has to be a different formulation than what yeah, you Yeah, we definitely made it more... Um, more sanitised, I guess, was the idea. But um, Dara, Dara's a big gamer. Obviously, he hosts the uh, Bastard Gaming Awards and things. And, Dara's uh, a massive geek. He really is. You should see his house. He's got a swimming pool in his basement. Really? I know. Ro Hanachari, who produced the TV show, picked it up for development for telly. And he spent an entire year with us in a residency in London, sort of um, turning it into a proper thing. And the 2014 show, it had, you know, it had lights, it had video, it had, uh, we weren't running it off a Wii, we were actually using proper hardware to play the games. Yeah. Had a bigger cast, a uh, bigger stage. Uh, and we even had that Wi-Fi, which is another thing I do, where the audience all play games on their phones along with us. So a lot of, a lot of what sold it initially to Dara and to the channel and, and to everybody was the interactivity with all the tech, with Wi-Fi wars. And actually, originally when we were doing the TV show, we were going to have like an app you could play along at home and play along with the games. And oh, nice. things in it, but all of that sort of interactive stuff got put to one side when we made the TV show, which was a shame because okay. uh, that was meant to be the heart of it. Are you a big gamer? I play all the time. Well, I stream on Twitch now, so I'm sort of playing most days. And the yeah. big thing I've really enjoyed on Twitch is the community stuff. So I've actually been able to chat to everybody in the chat yeah. and uh, engage with other people. That I, I didn't know that was a thing. I, saw, I would have been sneery about that a year ago, but actually. Like meeting other people online and sort of building the community, that's probably the nicest thing about it. Are you finding it more satisfying it doing it your way this way? Uh, then... I'm, I'm really enjoying the online. I, I, like, I like the fact that it's direct engagement. So I, the live shows with Wi Fi Wars, um, but also the Twitch stuff and the podcast and all those sorts of things. The fact that I can just make a thing and then the people that want it have it. So, in terms of like retro game popularity, I grew up when it was, wasn't retro, it was just the games that we played. So, yeah. for me, it's nostalgia rather than it being a retro thing, I guess. But, well, I think the last thing in the last few years as well is that because there's been this, not just around the retro games, but also the um, the sort of aesthetic of retro, is actually 10 years ago, kids would have probably sneered at this because they'd been wanting their GTA, like GTA 3D graphics and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Whereas now, this is arguably as if not more visually appealing to kids than the other stuff. Yeah, exactly. Because now you can do everything. So there, there seems to be a lot more, like when we do Wi-Fi Wars, we, we, we do a kid's version of Wi-Fi Wars and um, we play Pong and 300 kids all scream at the screen playing Pong. So there's something still pure and beautiful about the gameplay and the simplicity of it that, that kids still get on board with, which is an ace. Okay, well, one last question. Flights of Fancy. Someone gives you right. unlimited budget. What kind of game would you make? Well, I've talked about Wi-Fi was a lot, but that, that's the main thing is scaling that. Because uh, at the moment, this uh, this guy, Rob, who um, built the tech where everybody plays along in the audience, we do it online now as well. Um, we can do that. Oh, I got killed by a crocodile. Uh, we can only play it with a few hundred people at the moment. We need to scale up the hardware and the sort of online infrastructure. So if I could uh, do anything, I'd just give Rob all the money so that he could let everyone, <laughs> everyone on the planet play Pong. All right, well, wonderful. Where can people find you if they want to hunt you down after seeing you on this? The internet, I'm on there. Fine. It's broad enough answer. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, talking through our flaps, playing a console game of Frogger, we will say goodbye and thank you to Steve O'Neill. Not Neil, but Mick thank Neil. you. Ah! This, this is good tennis. This, this is bad tennis. I'm Mr. Biffo and these are my top three games based upon TV shows with the word Hill in the title for some reason. At number three, it's Hill Street Blues, a DOS game later released on the Atari ST and Amiga based upon the 1980s cop drama. Taking the role of Captain Ferrillo, this simulation required players to bring down the city's soaring crime rate by giving orders to officers, placing roadblocks and putting an egg in an old woman's shopping cart. At number two, it's Benny Hill's Mad Cap Chase for the ZX Spectrum. A weird adventure game in which the famous TV pervert can be found helping his neighbours and stealing ladies' bras from washing lines, replete with Hill hilariously being chased by a big boobied hag. At number one, it's Grange Hill, also for the Specky, a thoroughly depressing adventure based upon the children's BBC series, in which players can die in a number of imaginative ways, including starving to death behind a wall, tripping over a loose paving stone, a drug overdose, walked to death by a dog, dying after drinking sewage water, eaten by cannibal pensioners, and being murdered by your own mother. Tucker Jenkins! Pirates can be any shape This one's an oblong! Ain't that great? We're here in the Garden of Nivin and Nivin is hungry 
And I should suppose I should probably link this video game somehow. Well, let's link it to arcade games. How about how about the crane grabber? You remember those? Yes! Yes! Paul, come on out. Come on. Here he is. Come on. Come, come. <laughs> come by. <laughs> Do you know who you're dressed as today, no, Paul? No, of course I don't. What is this? You're the Herald of Nibin. Oh, no, that makes sense. Yeah. I wish you told me beforehand. And I wouldn't have had so many complicated questions. Do you know what this is? It's a bucket that you've written <laughs> Nibin's pranny on. <laughs> so... We're going to put this down here. Do you know what um, Nibin likes to put in his pranny? <laughs> <laughs> like I should know these facts. Can you explain? Can you That's explain? my magic eye. Can you explain why you've drawn that on there, Paul? You've drawn this <laughs> on here. Like you've drawn, you drawn tits on me. <laughs> These are my magic eyes. And they're crop circles. If you, if you touch this, <laughs> if you touch that. I'm not touching you touch that. that. I can no, make your wishes come true. You're on camera and you're going to go to the press about the fact that I touched your colostomy bag. It's not a colostomy <laughs> bag. It's a... So, uh, Paul, do you remember in the arcades they had... Uh, it's gone lower. Uh, yeah. Do you remember the arcades, Paul? The seaside arcades? Yes, I remember the arcades, the seaside arcades. Got any yes, interesting, interesting memories? Yeah. Do you remember the crane grabber? Or what were they called, you Larry? UFO catchers. UFO catchers. Do you remember those where the claw would come down? I remember the ones that would pick up the toys and yeah. drop them in the ship. There'd be a fiver wrapped around a brick or something. Yeah. How about we play that for real? And we do it to please Niven. Yeah. As you are his herald. Yeah, I know. And we need to feed his family. Yeah, no, it all makes sense. It's all logical. <laughs> it all makes sense. So we're gonna... Uh... The battery pack has found its way to my... to my gooch. <laughs> <laughs> Why has he got a battery pack? <laughs> See, there's, there's a lot, there's a weird... <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> it's got a blinking eye. Do you want me to see if I can fish it out yeah, from this side? Oh, I can see it! Oh, oh God! It. <laughs> it's a, it's a sort of an oblong. Oh, dear. It's going to smell like a <laughs> Join! Do you want me to push it back You're up? You're going to have to push it! <laughs> right, we're there. We're there. <laughs> Now we're married. <laughs> what were we talking about, Paul? What I don't we doing know here? what we're doing anymore. Niven's Herald, Niven's Pranny. <laughs> Paul, would you like to lay on the floor? Just yeah. <laughs> put Niven's Pranny between your legs. Uh, okay, yeah. You know what, generally, that far away from crying right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're feeling a lot of emotion. Is that because uh, I touched your gooch? <laughs> it's like that. Oh, you know what, it's fine. <laughs> oh, <we> bless him. <laughs> Hook it. Can I hook it on the pad? <laughs> <laughs> we need some contestants to play the crane grabber and feed Nivin's panny. <laughs> <laughs> you make it sound so natural and obvious. <laughs> uh, well, we have a, a contestant first, please. <laughs> Who's brave Later enough on. to come to my DJ, pranny? DJ Slope. A loud round of applause for the, the first man who is <laughs> brave enough to feed Nivin's pranny. I am embarrassed and yeah. I'm not even yet. Well, hang on, we need, we need something to pick up. So here we are. Paul, you should feel lucky. Yeah. These are... These are Tesco finest prawns. Oh, so only the most <laughs> things I'm allergic to in the whole world are yeah. getting rested upon my body. <laughs> Nivin, Nivin loves prawns. Nivin loves prawns. Oh, let's put that one there. I won't put it on. <laughs> There's three prawns. Do you think, Dan, you can get... Oh, God! <laughs> 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 you okay, quick? Wet wipes. <laughs> It went in my mouth. <laughs> He's allergic to seafood. <laughs> <laughs> Let me help. Jesus this is nice. Oh, it's ice. Paul, it's all over me. You need to move. It's, it's all over the floor. It's, the floor. it's on your hat. It's on your chest. <laughs> I haven't got it. These are these are kitchen services. He said, <laughs> he said, don't get it near my face. It's going to be all right. I'm going to see. Fall. Seriously, are you going to be we all right? We will see. Everyone else who's here, I do apologize. I am now that are far away from crying. <laughs> <laughs> my God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> We've checked Paul out, and apparently he's he's not going to swell up and die. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Dan, okay. get the prawns off of Paul and into Niven's Franny. Jenny, when you're ready, we'll hear the noise. And one, two, three. 
Off you go. It's too high up. No, that's, that's it. Suck it in, Paul. You could try pushing them off. There we go. There's a good strategy. Because that, just like in the arcades, this. <laughs> Remember wow. those? When you this is actually, this, this feels like I'm going to go around. He's going around. He's going around. He's going around. He's going to grab him from the other side. But he's by your feet now. Your clown shoes. Why are you wearing those? Don't move. Why, don't move your feet. Why did you choose this particular costume, Paul? What do you mean? Why did I choose this costume? You can tank with fat <laughs> oaf. <laughs> I'm not going to get there in time. <laughs> oh, uh, how are we doing, Jenny? We're good. We're still, you still got for time, Dan. Quick. Right, hang on. How do, I, how do I open <sighs> this? Oh, yes, this back button. All right. Oh, oh there are, it's opening, Paul. The claw is open. You could have done this with a cartoon cutout of something. <laughs> oh, he's got a prod. Yeah! He's got a oh, no! <laughs> quick, quick, get into the... Oh, no, he's dropped it. We need to get it into the pranny. Quick, Dan. Yeah, that was it. Hey. Well, you failed. Let's reset the prawns. One, two, three, and off you go. Get those pawns. Go, living go. Come on. Get it off. This is taking for... No. no. Ah. She didn't achieve... It's fine. You didn't that see anything. A, we wanted the attention of oh, what, seeing... What's the... happening here? Oh, well, you... What's... Can we... No. You need to lift the crane up. I'm trying to lift the crane up, Biffa. There we go. There we are. Oh, get there. Oh, there. oh, oh this is... don't no. touch it with your don't hands. Stop helping her. How do, you, how, do you, how do you make it go down? There we go. This is the weirdest day of my life. <laughs> really? And that, no, I know. And that's saying something. <laughs> This, this game, this, is, this game is a failure. It really is. Oh, I'm good. I went through all of this. You're one of your game. failures. I'm blaming you for wearing that outfit. Don't you put it on me. You need to move it down. That's it. I'm trying. This is Joel, we're done. We're done. That's it. Time up. Time up. I'm sorry. Don't kick his cranny. Uh, yeah, that was you. Go on. <laughs> you. This ends. This is all over now. <laughs> down. What do you mean down? I'll make it easier for you. I'll only put two prawns on you this time. I thought that was the last go. Larry's still not had a go. But Larry's... Larry's got in... a nosebleed. But yeah, so now right. there's a good chance I'll get blood on me. Yeah. And fish. Are you, are you, can you do it with a nosebleed? I've got a nosebleed. Yeah, I think you can do it with a nosebleed. <laughs> You'll be all right. You won't get too much in your mouth. Okay. <laughs> this is the worst, <laughs> the worst of everything ever. All right, get, the, pran get the pranny between my bloody legs. Get the between your legs. seafood. <laughs> got bloody... God damn it! Just right, Larry. Yeah, yeah, you're but... only going to be able to do this one-handed. Okay. Would you like it's some? A... He's just got a nosebleed. Stop! It's not Flicking. a nosebleed. Oh! <laughs> God, why is this happening again? Come on, Larry. Once again, man. Why is this happening Don't... again, Larry? There we go. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Get it quick, timer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand what's is happening. This is an accident. Look at him. Smell of shit. Smell of crawl, so it's just throw up. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you tell us? This? <laughs> oh, God, don't be sick on me. Why didn't you tell us this? <laughs> <laughs> you can stop. You can stop. Oh, stop. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bucket there, man. But there is one prawn inside it. That <laughs> <laughs> uh, was digitised for the show. Bye. <laughs>